Hello. Okay, so I wanted to quickly show you some Python code for um, querying addresses um, online. So one thing that you can do is you can use GeoPy, which is the Python library, um, open source, to query addresses, um, latitude and longitudes, any type of data associated with mapping is, um, is probably um, going to be available with this open source API. So I've got the code on my GitHub, which I will link to. Um, the other thing is that one of the prerequisites you will need to have is Python. So we are using Python and you will need to download it at python.org downloads. Um, go ahead and download the latest version. I'm not sure if the latest version comes with Anaconda, so I apologize about that. But in any case, you'll need to install Anaconda Navigator if you want to use Jupyter Notebook. Um, otherwise, it might be possible to install Jupyter Notebooks as a standalone, but Anaconda Navigator is actually quite useful. So um, it looks like this um, circle here. So just query Anaconda install um, in your search engine and should lead you to the first um, link there. Um, you can install on your Windows, your Mac OS, whichever one you have. Um, the other thing is that the GeoPy has a documentation site that is really helpful. There's a bunch of contents that allow you to explore the capabilities. For example, GeoPy actually allows you to cal calculate distance with the data that you receive back from the API. Um, and the API is queried by creating a, um, an object called Nomaten and um, um, you know, typing in a query which you can get from a file, a data file, which I will demonstrate in this tutorial. Um, and then with that um, location, we can actually get the address. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start this tutorial. I'm gonna pull up Jupyter Notebook since I have it installed already. Um, I just cd into my preferred directory that has my code and I'm just run Jupyter Notebook from command line. So that's one thing about having that Anaconda installed is you can run Jupyter Notebook from your terminal or command prompt. All right, so I've got the script here. And again, the scripts can be found at um, my GitHub page. Um, here. Um, and I'll link to that below. It's under demos. And all right, let's go through the code. So First thing you're going to gonna do, you're going to want to do is install GeoPy. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and just restart and clear out output. Just to make things easier. So we've got a PIP install GeoPy. I've already installed it before, so it does say satisfied, but for you, you probably have like a long list of log. Um, and by the end of it, you would see that it was successful. Um, you can also install P with PIP on your command prompt or terminal. So that's also one option. Um, the next thing you wanna do is import pandas for some calculations. We're gonna use uh, pandas for making a data frame, uh, which is a uh, Python data structure to hold the data. Um, we're going to use Nomaten from GeoPy. And so we can import that here. Um, the next thing you want to do is format the data. So um, this is pretty important. So we're going to assume that we have a data called data CSV in the local directory. So when I say local directory, it's got to be saved to the same directory as this Python script. Um, if you wanted to access an external 
um, file path, then you will need to go through the Python documentation to um, to 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 write out the correct file path. I think there's some documentation about that um, with either pandas or um, some sort of uh, Python library. But so what we're doing here is we're using the, a data frame, data structure, we're reading in the CSV data. We've got comma separated values. Um, so let's go ahead and run that. And then we can do DF head to print the data off. So we can see that in this file, we have some column names. So that's pretty important. Uh, if you don't have any column names in your file, then you can specify column names in this uh, DF declaration. But um, otherwise, you, you don't actually need um, these column names. So you can see here we've got some null values, which is fine, because the cool thing about GeoPy is that you don't need all of these columns to query the latitude and longitude or even the address. So let's say that we only have this institution here, and we have the city, we have the country, but maybe we don't even have that. The more the better, the more data the better, obviously, but you, you can kind of play around with what GeoPy is capable of doing. So in this case, what we're going to do just to make things easier, so we're going to concatenate all of these um, critical columns. So we've used, we'll use company, we'll use city, and we'll use country. And so you see, you'll, you'll see here, um, we've got from our DF column company, from our DF column city, and from our DF column country, and we have delimited that with a space. Um, so this is going to concatenate all of these columns and save it to a very uh, to a, col a new column called query. So the cool thing about the data frame, as you may know, is that you don't have to explicitly create your um, column, a new column. You can just create the new column by calling a new column name. So you can see here, we don't have a query column, but we're creating it here in this declaration. So the iLoc, as you know, it just kind of like prints off some data. It says from index zero to five, print column eight after eight and not after nine. So let's run that. All right, so this is our new column. Because we only have one row of data, it obviously only give, gave us the first row, um, which is the only row that's in our data file. The next thing you wanna do is um, kind of um, make sure that you're remembering to, to drop the duplicates. Um, in this case, obviously we don't have any duplicates, but if you did, it would kind of make your query a bit um, messy. So just go ahead and kind of drop those duplicates where you can. Basically what this does, drop duplicates is a method of the pandas library uh, for specifically for this DF. Uh, we're using a subset or a column name called query. We're keeping the first instance and we're in placing it um, is true. So basically we are um, we're not uh, keeping the nulls. Um, this is just to print off some data, and then we've got the head here, which will print off the sample. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, nothing happened because we only have one row of data, obviously. Optional step here is to drop the column names that are not helpful for this query. So as you can see, we'll just go up a little bit here. We've got one, two, three, four, five columns that are not useful in this um, particular um, query. So technically we could just drop them. Now this is particularly helpful if you have a lot of data. Um, let's just say you have, you know, thousands of rows and you've also got like over 20 columns. 
that's quite a lot of strain on the API and it will take your script forever to load. So I would suggest kind of deleting null data where there, there are null data um, spots. So this is helpful if you want to do that. I will run it just because it's not going to hurt anything. So what happens is that we drop the column district and county, for example. I mean, technically we could drop state um postcode but i'll i'll just keep those for the sake of i'm not sure actually um print off some some information and then print off a sample of the row so there you go now we've dropped that column so the next thing is that geopi is going to return to us uh, latitude and longitude coordinates um and i'm actually going to add in here I forgot to before. It's going to give us a specific address for uh, this particular query. Um, and we are going to take the latitude and longitude because maybe we we'll want to do some maps with it later. Okay, so go ahead and run this. So this basically, like I said, um, you can create a new column in your DF by just declaring it. In this case, we declared it to null. So it's going to use our entire DF. So if we had multiple rows of data, it would create a new column and a, and a null or a blank for each row. Okay, so then we'll print off the head as well. All right, so actually you can see it's not null, it's actually just white space. All right, so the second thing you're gonna do is you're going to use this GeoPy to fetch the latitude, um, the, to fetch, um, let's just say geocode data. We've got a lot going on here, but latitude and longitude, we've also got address now. So what's happening now, similar to the code in GeoPy, we're creating this instance of an object called Nomaten, and uh, we're gonna call it uh, Geolocator. Um, this user agent is basically just the name that, that you're giving the API. So the API, you knock on the API's door and then ask for your name and you say your name is my app. So you could change this to anything, to be honest, but it's just merely for the, the API sake. Um, so then we go through a for loop, we, end up, we go through our entire indexes, and um, we declare a variable called location, which is going to query um, the column, the query column at this index. So if we had, you know, multiple rows of data, we would iterate through the amount of rows in our data. And for each iteration we're going to call the latitude, the longitude, and the address. And then this is just for exceptional cases because there are cases where, um, so this actually is important because I tried to do this on a, like an enormous amount of data before, and it turns out that my concatenation, um, some of the data was coming back as null because I was trying to concatenate data that didn't exist. And so as a result, uh, your script will stop and you won't actually know it until, you know, <laughs> like 30,000 rows deep. So it's better to just mitigate that at, up front. So it's basically it says if there's a null, then catch it and then don't do anything to it and just move on to the next one. Um, we're going to print some data afterwards. So here we go. Cool. So we have the latitude and longitude data for our query which is University of Sussex, Brighton, UK. And then we've got um, the location address here as well. Um, so you're done, basically. And so what you want to do now is basically save your data to a new file. Um, and we'll call it geopy underscore data dot CSV. So we'll run that. And we can check our local directory to see that it did actually write data as indicated. 
So cool, we've got the complete address there. All right, so the last thing I wanna say is that definitely check out GeoPy documentation because there are a lot of cool functions that you can use to play with this data you just queried. Um, for example, you can calculate some distances between uh, two points. Um, yeah, a lot of cool things to explore there. Um, the other thing is that I tried to use GeoPy with like, I don't know, it was kind of like six million records or not six million, but I don't know. <laughs> it was like a lot of data. Uh, it was basically like the whole UK uh, um, street addresses data since like since like you know like five years so it was an enormous amount of data and so what happens is when you you query these open source apis they typically have a limit to the amount of data you can query in um, a given time so um, if this happens to you if you're trying to if you're trying to query like a large amount of data i would recommend looking through the documentation to see just what's the cap what's the max amount of data you can query within a day because it does turn out some of these apis you can query like x amount of data in one day but the next day you have the right so you could technically make a script that queries it every day but something to look into um that's it for today thanks for watching